We play video games to have fun and to escape our horrible lives, but we also want to feel like we've overcome a challenge, and when you buy a game that doesn't live up to this, it could be more disappointing than when you hear Joe Hendry's voice in a What Culture Gaming video. I'm Joe Hendry from What Culture Gaming, and this is 7 video games that were just too damn easy. In at number 7 is the remake of Doom. The original Doom is an absolute beast. Every time you get hit, it does a little more to mess with your complexion as you take damage. It starts with a simple bloody nose, but quickly escalates to look like you've been swallowed by a combine harvester, and unfortunately, due to the difficulty curve, don't expect to keep your face intact for long. Playing the original on Nightmare is going to be exactly what it says on the tin, but if you fast forward to the modern remake, it's a little bit different. What we will see say is that the remake is a good game, it just doesn't feel like Doom. Why? Because that crushing difficulty curve just isn't there. Thankfully Nightmare Mode makes it a little bit more of a challenge, but even the original on Normal Mode provided enough frustration for anyone. Up next, in at number 6, it's Pokemon X and Y. Look, it's Pokemon. We weren't expecting Dark Souls here, but what we did want is to feel like we'd completed a challenge when it's done. For my childhood, it was Pokemon Red and Blue, and whilst it was easy, I still feel like I'd done something when I completed the Pokemon League. That's why I feel sorry for a generation of youngsters who have had Pokemon X and Y as their first taste of the series, because there just isn't really anything to overcome. The trainers and gym leaders you face don't seem to have Pokemon that are going to be a threat, and they always pick the wrong moves, making it feel like they're just letting you beat them on purpose and really pulling you out of the experience. One of the producers, Genichi Masada, said the reason was that nowadays people are too occupied with their phones and are busier consuming other content so would commit less time to a harder Pokemon game. Hopefully Pokemon Go can satisfy those people and you can make us a harder Pokemon game. In at number 5 is the new Super Mario Bros. 2. This game made it clear that the new Super Mario Bros. series really isn't that like the original, because the original, whilst accessible in the beginning, quickly raised the difficulty level, proving a challenge for any gamer. These installments are somewhat repackaged for a new, younger, and less patient audience, with the game being just a little too much of a breeze. It is a great game with awesome new features, and it's a blast to play, but it feels more like the difficulty we'd find from a Kirby series rather than Mario. As well as being easier overall, there's also an abundance of coins, meaning that you'll be racking up extra lives with ease, making it pretty darn difficult to ever actually fail in your quest. However, if you don't like it, just get Super Mario Maker and tackle some of the outrageous user-made levels. Then you'll think twice about complaining. In at number 4 is Gears of War 3. Look, Gears of War isn't known as the most difficult game ever, because once you get used to the cover system, it's fairly straightforward, and we're not taking anything away from the experience, because overall it is an awesome series. Our issue is that even on insane difficulty, as long as you have a buddy to revive you and things go pear-shaped, the series is just going to feel a little on the easy side for this installment. Where the first game has a particularly difficult lambent wretch section, and the second had the challenging vehicle section, especially when played on solo, the the third just didn't really seem to have that moment that caused us any real trouble. However, if you don't feel challenged by the single player, there's always that multiplayer mode which can even the score. In at number 3 is Burnout Paradise. And look, Burnout Paradise is a laugh. Don't get me wrong. If you're going to have a single player mode though, you need to give us some challenge to go along with it, because pretty much all the challenges in this game can be completed easily without any issues at all, and in most of the races, you can crash about 10 or 20 times before it actually makes any difference to where you come in the race. And I know that's not totally what this game is about, but a slightly more punishing system that penalizes you for crashing off the road could have added an extra level of intensity to this racer. Number 2 is Luigi's Mansion for the GameCube, and many were disappointed all the way back when the console launched because it didn't launch with a quintessential Mario game, like the groundbreaking Mario 64 release. We instead got Luigi's Mansion. Now instead of being a traditional platformer, this instead required you to navigate the mansion capturing ghosts in very, very similar fashion to the idea of Ghostbusters. The main adventure can be overcome with relative ease in about 5 hours with its predictable enemies and ridiculously easy boss fights. Nintendo did later perfect the initial attempt at doing something different with these characters in the beautiful Mario Sunshine, and this time it was with a water pack on Mario's back, and this produced a satisfying, fun, and at times challenging platformer that laid the groundwork for the acclaimed Super Mario Galaxy in its bonus stages. 
So, whilst Luigi's Mansion itself didn't quite have the same depth and difficulty, Nintendo did eventually listen to the critics, righted those wrongs and gave us Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon for the 3DS, which finally came with that increased difficulty level. And finally, the game that is just ridiculously too easy, another crime from Nintendo, it's Yoshi's Story for the N64. Now let me give you some background, Yoshi's Island for the Super Nintendo was an awesome game, which is why people were so hyped for Yoshi's Story which was coming out on the N64. The problem was that the difficulty curve that we came to know and love from the Super Nintendo just didn't carry over in this instalment on the N64. Whilst Yoshi's Island on the Super Nintendo had a whopping 55 levels with increasing difficulty, Yoshi's story had only 24, and the slower pace with less challenging obstacles made it feel somewhat underwhelming. Despite having some awesome graphics and looking the part with its unique art style, in a time when 3D platformers were the in thing, if a 2D adventure didn't have something extra special to offer with its difficulty curve, it was unfortunately left behind. And nowadays we've got stuff like Cuphead, so I suppose that's what I get from moaning about this. I've been Joe Hendry from What Culture Gaming and thank you for watching this video. Please make sure you like, share and subscribe and also head over to whatculture.com for all your favourite news, reviews, features and so much more. Also, keep up with us at What Culture Gaming on this Twitter handle and we shall see you next time. <laughs> oh, 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 wasn't that something? Don't forget to like, share and subscribe below and also the people who made this lovely video, they're appearing right here. But if you're thinking to yourself, I want to see more content, Jules, then why not look above my head, as there probably is some. I don't know. I can't see it. Until next time.